Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, and thanks for joining this Privacy Rules uh, webinar where we are going to discuss about the uh, differences between uh, two laws, in particular in relation of transferring of data. And the two laws uh, that we are going to study and analyze are the Chinese PIPL and the European GDPR. We are going to see which are the key similarities and differences of those two laws and to understand how to comply with one and the other and how the experts of the Privacy Roots Alliance can support you in dealing with them in an easy way and in order to uh, easily comply thanks to the connections between the members of our alliance. Um, Privacy Rules, uh, uh, to provide you with a little overview, it's an alliance indeed of uh, not only legal experts that cover, by the way, 60 countries all over the world with specialized experts in privacy and data protection uh, that are localized in each of those countries that we represent. Uh, but also cybersecurity and crisis communication experts that supports us in uh, the fully fledged services necessary to comply with those various laws. Um, in the webinar of today, uh, we will uh, uh, listen from uh, two experts that are um, from the Chinese jurisdiction and the Italian jurisdiction, representing in this case also the EU and the GDPR. From the one side, we have uh, Ji Hong Chen, equity partner from the law firm Zhong Lun, one of the most relevant law firms in China. On the other side, we have uh, Chiara Agostini, um, Italian partner uh, of the law firm um, RP Legal and Tax, uh, that is a, a relevant firm with seven offices all over Italy that support companies in dealing not only with Italian laws, but also, of course, with the GDPR. So without further delay, I would like to uh, turn it over to our experts, and I would like to start east to west with uh, uh, Ji Hong Chen, um, that will provide us with some more details uh, on how to comply with the Chinese law. Thank you, Ji Hong. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. They were nice and happy for, our, for me to introduce Chinese uh, legal regime regarding data protection. Let me share my screen first. Uh, and today, uh, my presentation will focus on Chinese legal regime regarding data protection, particularly for data cross-border transfer mechanisms. As you may re realize that uh, data cross-border transfer now is now the enforcement focus for Chinese regulators. Introduce myself. I'm uh, Ji Hong Chen, equity partner of uh, Zhu Law Firm, a full search law firm in China. My uh, practice focuses on cybersecurity, data protection, AI, and uh, IP protection, etc. Uh, when we talk about the Chinese legal regime and particularly the data protection regime, we uh, always tell you that uh, Chinese data protection legal regime is quite a complicated, including laws, regulations, administrative measures, non-binding rules, and uh, national standards. But among, among them, the most important uh, uh, framework laws are, are the three pillars, and they are uh, CSL, DSL, and PIPL. Uh, CSL means uh, cyber security law, and DSL means uh, data security law. And PIPL refers to personal information protection law. And CSR, CSR was came into force on uh, June 1st, 27. This law will mainly regulate, regulate, regulate uh, multi MLPS, multi level protection scheme, and network uh, critical device and dedicated product testing and certification system, CI protection cybersecurity review and cybersecurity monitoring, early warning and uh, information notification. Uh, as for DSL, this law will mainly regulate uh, data classification system, reading system, and national uh, uh, important data and national core data protection, uh, data export control, security review mechanism for data, data cross-border transfer regulation, and uh, data security protection obligation, data transaction and the licensing requirements and the chance legal regime. Uh, for PIPRO, this law mainly stipulates the definition of a PI and the basic principles for PI processing in China, legal basis and for PI processing 
and write of PI subject rules on data localization and the PI cross board transfer and PI processor obligation and its law. Next, I will talk about the regulation system and uh, for data administration and governance in China. Uh, simply speaking, China has our uh, China has no uh, unified regulator, but has a multi regulator system. Uh, better understand the multi regulator, there's our ancient Chinese methodology. Yeah, when and Chinese culture, dragon is responsible for the for managing the rivers and what causes. And if one dragon is responsible for the managing of the rivers and what causes, everything goes well. But when nine dragons are pointed for the regulation of the river and what causes, and this, this overlap of power will lead to confusion and inefficiency. Now we can simply speaking that China has a nine dragon system for the uh, cyberspace administration and data governance. But in recent years, China is trying to uh, strengthen the centralized leadership for cyberspace administration. And the CC is among the nine dragons, the most powerful one who coordinates the cyberspace, cybersecurity workers among different reg regulators. Uh, so you can see there's uh, MIT, CEC, and MPS are traditionally are the the most relevant uh, regulators for data protection and cybersecurity. Uh, in Chinese National People's Country meeting, uh, concluded in the March, uh, China government decided to form our new regulator, uh, which is called the National Data Bureau. And this new bureau will be responsible for, for the advancing the development of data related uh, fundament, fundamental institutes. Coordinating the, the the data data resource and theory in, in the transaction and push forward the planning and building the digital China and the digital economy and digital society among others. Let's focus on the cross border data transfer, and uh, uh, there are three mechanism available and. Chinese uh, DSL and PIPL for cross-border data transfer. And they are a CEC security uh, assessment, CNSCCs and a certification. Uh, for the CEC security assessment, and uh, when cross-border transfer of important data, our personal information by CII, CIO, or by data processor processing PI over a million individuals, a PI of uh, 100,000 individuals, or sensitive PI of 10,000 individuals accumulated since January 1st of the pre previous year. And if any condition is triggered by the data processing and the CC security assessment will apply. And it is a compulsory requirements Besides the CC security assessment, there are other two alternatives. And uh, uh, one is CNSCC, quite similar with uh, GDPRCC. And CNSCC will mainly be applicable uh, for the following uh, scenarios and uh, submit the following accumulative criteria. Uh, the domestic data processor is not a CIO. A processing PI less than one million individuals and not reaching PI of 100,000 100, individuals accumulated for cross border transfer since uh, January 1st of last year and uh, not reaching sensitive PI of 10,000 individuals accumulated for cross border transfer since January 1st of last year. Uh, yeah, and if any other circumstance pres prescribed by CEC may also apply CSCC. The last uh, mechanism is uh, certification. 
and certification mainly applied to intergroup, intragroup across board bid transfer or PI among MNCs, subsidiaries or affiliates of the same business entity. Um, the Chinese entity of the MNCs may be uh, the certified body and the scenarios and be a legal obligation for the certification. Here I list uh, a few FAQs uh, for the foreign entities that uh, have a commercial person in China. First one is about the what is cross body transfer and chance law. And we, when we decide where is transfer will be regarded as cross body transfer and chance law, we may need to consider three facts. First one is about the bid type, uh, whereas the bid transfer will involve two special types of data, important data, or TI collected in China. The second factor to be considered is about the method to be transferred. Uh, in the trans law, and this law will regulate two methods for data cross-border transfer, uh, including the physical uh, transfer from domestic server transfer to the overseas server. It is a kind of uh, physical transfer and other remote ac access. The data is stored in trans, trans server, but will allow the foreigner or allow the foreign entity to access to the server to read to download the data stored in China. is another kind of uh, cross border transfer as remote access. And the Chinese law oversee include the third party country and also include uh, uh, Hong Kong SER, Macau SER, and uh, Taiwan. And this is about the um, definition of cost body transfer. And secondly, how to understand the third hold? Because we just now uh, uh, mentioned the three third hold, one million and one hundred thousand and ten thousand. One million refers to the data processor, processing PI over 1 million individuals. And for 100,000 and 10,000, means that the cross-border transfer of PI of 100,000 individuals or sensitive PI of 10,000 individuals accumulatively since uh, January 1st of the pre pre previous years. Uh, third, how to understand the localization obligation and trans law. If a company uh, in China triggers the CC security assessment, it is so conduct the filing as uh, required and the data cross-border transfer can only be carried out lawfully after passing the CC security assessment unless the laws and regulation specially request for some special data, a special types of data or entity and to be locally stored. The filing for the CC security assessment does not necessarily lead to the data localization obligation. A fourth about the two concept, a relationship is between the Finding legal document and seeing a CC. As you know, that uh, when we declare the CC security assessment, we must um, file the legal document between the Chinese data processor and the foreign data recipient to the CEC. Uh, uh, the binding legal document required and the CC security assessment uh, and the uh, certification from legal nature. Uh, differ from the CNC SEC. And uh, as the CNC SEC is one of the cross border transfer uh, mechanism and the PIPL, though in the context of data cross border transfer, the CNC may overlap with above mentioned legal document on the value orientation and the certain content for protecting the right and interest of the data subject. It should be noted that. Uh, legal documents and the assessment procedure may entail 
important data protection, which cannot be found in the text of the CNSCC. Lastly, about the CNCC or the certification, because we know that uh, if the CC security assessment uh, is not uh, is not triggered, the Chinese data processor has two choices to select the CCC or certification. So which mechanism is the better one? Uh, the certification is relatively a long-term mechanism for regular data transfer for scenarios, especially of intergroup processing activities and can count as a relatively uh, stable and continuous uh, mechanism. The certification mechanism to certain extent is similar to uh, BCR, binding corporate rules, and the GDPR, which share similar requirements such as a legally, legally binding agreement, organization uh, management rules for cross-border transfer, et cetera. The CNSCC, as opposed to the certification, can be more flexible and for tools suitable for relatively short-term, temporary cross-border transfer or continuous uh, transfer with various uh, kinds of uh, business uh, collaboration based on relatively simple and clear processing purpose. Uh, in the end, uh, give some uh, compliance uh, takeaway. And uh, you know that uh, Chinese uh, cross border transfer regulation is quite complicated. And uh, we can see a trend that uh, the regulator will strengthen the regulation on the cross border transfer. So, how to make compliance for the regulation in China? And here's uh, five steps. First, uh, and uh, uh, formulate our overall strategy for data cross border transfer. And for multinational companies or other companies in China, and the uh, cross border transfer from China to OC country seems uh, is inevitable. And uh, we can also see that there's a stringent data cross border transfer regulation in China. So it is a time for companies to develop our overall strategy for uh, management of the cross-border data transfer. And the second step is uh, data inventory and identification of data cross-border transfer scenarios and carry out the data stocking, stock, stock taking in, uh, and also uh, conduct a self-check with respect to high-risk points such as uh, identification of important data, CI deter determination, et cetera, could uh, focus on business lens with over 1 million users of important data award. Step three, choose, uh, choose uh, a suitable cross-border transfer mechanism. If CEC security assessment uh, triggered, we have no choice but just to declare CEC security assessment before the CEC. And if um, CEC security assessment uh, is not triggered, we can choose a uh, Chinese SCC or select the um, a certification. Step four, risk uh, self-assessment and certification. And risk uh, self-assessment or PIA are required by the laws and conduct a self-assessment for risk and a data cross board transfer before any rectification. And according to the result of a self assessment or PIA, make a rectification accordingly and then conduct the assessment again and try to have a clean assessment result. Finally, uh, implement of the cross board transfer mechanism selected, for example, I declare the CC security assessment, conclude the CNCC and the record and with the CC accordingly, or apply for security certification of cross-border transfer of personal information. 
Okay, thank you. That's all my presentation. Perfect, Jiang. Thanks a lot for your very nice introduction on uh, how to comply with the PIPL and how you can uh, support in order to provide our followers with the fully uh, perspective of uh, complying with the two laws. I would, not, would like now to leave the floor to uh, Chiara Agostini for the GDPR-related part. Thank you, Alessandro, and good morning, everybody, or good evening, it depends on where you are. And um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Privacy Rules uh, and Alessandro Di Mattia and Andrea Bigazzi for the organization of this webinar and for giving us the opportunity to talk about this important topic. As uh, Jiong presented the PIPL frameworks and uh, the cybersecurity obligations uh, imposed by the PIPL uh, law um, that have to be followed uh, in doing businesses uh, in and out of China, um, uh, I want to talk uh, about uh, the GDPR checks uh, that needs to be done. Um, because in this context, we have to keep in mind uh, that uh, uh, it is necessary to comply also with the um, European disciplines. In any case uh, in which uh, there is a data controller or a data processor uh, that uh, is an European company or where the processing activities uh, um, are related to the offering of goods and services to data subjects that are located in the European Union or uh, once it regards the monitoring of uh, the behavior of um, European data subject, and this behavior takes place within the European Union. Um, uh, before uh, turning uh, to this uh, subject, uh, let me introduce uh, myself and uh, our law firm with the help uh, of uh, um, some slides. Perfect. If Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, as uh, Alessandro said, I'm Chiara Rossana Agostini and I'm uh, the TMT and the protection partner of uh, RP uh, Legal and Tax, an independent and innovator law firm since uh, 1949. Uh, we are um, uh, a full um, uh, service law with over 150 professionals six offices and partnership with leading international firms. We are um, proud to, um, to offer innov innovative and um, valuable uh, and legal solution with a close night uh, team. Um, as we are, uh, as I mentioned, um, 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 uh, um, a full service um, law firm. We cover more than um, 25 practice uh, areas. And of course, the, the data protection areas, which is the one that I uh, manage. Um, let's talk uh, about uh, um, the interrelation um, that exists between the GDPR, which is the European discipline, and the PIPL framework. First of all, uh, regarding the territorial scope, the GDPR focuses on the activities carried out, uh, of course, within the European Union, while the PIPL focus on the processing of personal data within the territory of China. When it comes to profiling, both the GDPR and the PIPL apply to processing of personal data of data subjects who are physically in their respective borders, regardless to place in which data controller is located or the data processing is carried out. Um, controllers that uh, in the PIPL framework uh, are defined as processors outside the EU borders shall designate a representative to manage EU data. Similarly, data originating from China require the designation of representative or the establishment of a special agency within this uh, territory. Other um, key similarities and as well as uh, differences between these two laws um, is the fact that uh, um, the GDPR requires 
the appointment of a data protection officer with particular skills and the indication of its content information accessible to data subjects through the uh, data controller privacy notice, and that uh, it is uh, necessary to notify this information to the competent authority. The PIPL does not have a specific role requirement for the person in charge of the personal information protection. Nevertheless, this person is still required to disclose this content information, similarly to the GDPR, and uh, is burdened by personal legal liability, unlike uh, the European discipline. Um, concerning the, the legal basis uh, that are uh, the, the, the base of uh, um, this, um, this processing, we can say that uh, um, the legal basis that apply for the processing of common personal data under the GDPR are very similar to the ones of the PIPL, but the EU law has a legal basis that allows, for example, processing for legitimate interest by the data controller, while the Chinese law does not. In addition, the PIPL allows processing of personal data legally disclosed by individuals, while the GDPR allows it only for special categories of data, as for example, health data. Um, moreover, we can say that uh, both law do not, uh, do not allow, uh, as Jiang presented to us uh, just a few minutes ago, um, a free international data transfer. Specific conditions, in fact, are required to be meet, met uh, for such transfer. The PIPL provides a higher level of involvement by public authorities, whereas the GDPR focuses more on the accountability principle. Moreover, according to the Chinese law, the international transfers require the data subject separate consent and the cybersecurity and data protection impact assessment. Um, um, and unlikely, uh, the GDPR can require the TIA or, uh, or the transfer impact assessment, but it's not uh, a, 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 an obligation, something that uh, it has to be uh, carried out uh, um, uh, necessarily. Um, under the GDPR, uh, lastly, security measures to be adopted by data controller are based on the accountability principle, whereas under the PIPL, the types of security measures are foreseen by the law itself. In conclusion, we can, of course, say that there are a lot of similarities, but also differences uh, between the two laws. So, it is necessary to make an assessment uh, both uh, under the PIPL as well as under the GDPR before doing business um, in and out of China. And uh, what uh, here in this slide you can see uh, what are the main compliance requirements uh, on a um, GDPR perspective, of course, uh, um, in a, a EU-China data transfer. And uh, this kind of check, uh, this and uh, this kind of assessment uh, is the um, the one that is included uh, in, in the um, privacy rules PIPL package. And uh, we, as a European uh, law firm, uh, and carried out uh, in favor of the companies that uh, ask for our assistance. Um, particularly, uh, the first check that we um, carried out, uh, um, th that we carry out uh, is the one on the basis of Article 6 and in particularly uh, the legal basis. So we um, identify the correct legal basis for the data transfer. And uh, we check uh, um, if this database, uh, if this legal basis is uh, um, was clearly uh, indicated uh, in the privacy notice to data subject, or if the data controllers uh, um, want to serve a specific privacy notice uh, to um, manifest and uh, identify this uh, uh, legal basis to data subject. Um, the second check that we do uh, is uh, under Articles uh, uh, 13 and 14 of the GDPR, 
as we check uh, um, if uh, uh, there is a privacy notice to data subjects that are involved in this uh, um, EU-China transfer. And we check if this, uh, this notice uh, uh, includes uh, all the information required by law, and as, for example, the correct legal basis, but also a reference to the persons involved in the processing and a reference to the data transfer and the um, safeguard used uh, to allow under the European law this kind of transfer. Um, the second type, uh, um, the third type of, ch of check that we do uh, inside this assessment is the one related to the correct regulation of the relationship between the, um, the persons involved in this processing. We check if the particular, um, if the person in charge with the processing received under Article 29 uh, specific uh, instruction to uh, process uh, this data, and uh, um, if uh, um, uh, there are uh, information on the security measures that this subject uh, needs to follow uh, in the processing. Um, uh, then we check uh, if there are providers that are used uh, uh, for this uh, data transfer, and we check if uh, this transfer, uh, th this relationship is uh, uh, regulated uh, under a specific contract, and uh, if there is a, a privacy contract uh, um, that uh, um, correctly regulates the relationship between the parties, and in particular, a data processing uh, agreement. Uh, which is a, a fundamental uh, requirement under um, the GDPR. Um, the last check that we um, uh, do inside this PIPL uh, um, package is uh, to check if the data transfer um, is based uh, on the basis of uh, an appropriate safeguard uh, under Article 36 of the European uh, of the GDPR, uh, such as uh, standard contractual clauses uh, with uh, transfer impact assessment, a uh, binding corporate rules uh, or in case uh, is uh, just a single transfer if there is for example the consent of the data subjects or other legal, legal basis or exceptions that justify this uh, data transfer um as i said before i mean this uh, gdpr compliance assessment uh, is included uh, in the privacy rules PIPL compliance package. And uh, um, in this slide, uh, you can see the, um, the workflow um, that we uh, use uh, and our methodology. Uh, in particular, we, um, we do the planning and Coping. Um, then we uh, do a, the document review. Uh, then we organize a video call assessment with the client to uh, understand the information uh, not clear or to have a clear framework uh, of the case. Uh, and then we um, we draft a, a result analysis and we send uh, a reporting uh, to to the client. Uh, of course, uh, in doing this uh, mm, uh, this assessment, uh, it, it is possible to find possible lacks uh, uh, in the um, uh, in the data processing and in particular in the data transfer. And for this reason, we offer also it on services to the client, as uh, uh, for example uh, the. Um, I mean, we uh, we uh, we offer the possibility to um, draft uh, a lot of deliverables, and in particular the one that uh, uh, that we found it necessary during the GDPR uh, assessment, and then uh, um, we. Um, offer assistance in the uh, in negotiating the data protection agreements with the um, subjects involved we offer training section uh, a legal design on privacy documents and uh, if it's this case uh, uh, general gdpr compliance uh, assessment 
Um, that's all. I conclude uh, my speech and I really thank uh, everybody for their attention. Thank you very much, Chiara, for uh, this uh, very quick but effective presentation on uh, you know, the key issues uh, when dealing with GDPR and data transfer and how you can help in particular thanks to this package that we have created combining the expertise of you as our Italian expert representing the EU and Gion uh, for China. I hope this presentation was also helping our audience to understand the complexities behind the two laws, the similarities but also the differences that we have to uh, keep in mind that are good reason for always having experts localized in the country uh, to support us. I would like to thank the two of you uh, for this very uh, brief but nice and effective presentation. I would like to thank our audience for being with us today and I look forward to meet you all, of course, inviting everyone to contact us as Privacy Rules or our experts that are here with us today uh, for any additional information on the uh, PIPL compliance package and the GDPR, of course. Um, uh, so feel free to contact all of us. We, you will find all the information and details in the uh, summary and description of this event. So thanks a lot and looking forward to meeting you all very soon again. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.